Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. It has been a very, very busy day in Israel and Lebanon, uh, surely Gaza and the West Bank as well. But we're going to be focusing on Israel, Lebanon, even Syria, different things going on, Hezbollah attacking uh, a, a tank that, that put quite a few Israeli soldiers uh, wounded with shrapnel into a hospital there. We do not know how many fatalities they may, there may have been in that attack there. Israel allegedly uh, launching some type of a cyber attack on uh, pagers. There are going to be disturbing images in this broadcast, so please be advised of that as well that uh, left over 2,000, estimated over 2,000 uh, uh, Hezbollah and other people injured who were answer answering pagers. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, there are still people who use pagers, especially in these countries here, mainly because they're receivers and not transmitters. Already Israel has used the technology before to be able to target uh, individuals and kill high-ranking leaders using their cell phones. So Hezbollah has reverted to using pagers. Uh, and of course, Trump, uh, the attempted assassination on a golf course, uh, the man being in captivity. So today is September the 17th, 2024. I want to just remind you, we've loaded a couple of videos over on Patreon here recently. You may want to check those out, and I'll be doing another one. I was planning on doing it this afternoon, but some very interesting things transpired today uh, as I, uh, me and my wife met with a dear friend, Anna, and her sister-in-law, and uh, I want to share some things about generational curses. That'll be going over on Patreon as well, and I am steadily working on the book. Haven't decided on a title on it yet, but uh, so hopefully we'll get that completed here in a short period of time and have that ready for release here this year. Uh, let's get right into what's happening, though, in the world here. The IFO uh, admits a number of Israeli soldiers are wounded by shrapnel following an anti-tank missile, uh, an ATGM attack from Lebanon at an army vehicle near Beit Halel. And uh, actually been up to Beit Halel before. Uh, so you're seeing images of that there uh, as that happened there. Also, too, Hezbollah, they have, uh, uh, talking about their radios using cutting-edge tech remotely. Uh, these Most of these are pagers. I did speak with uh, Brother Ron today. He has got extensive knowledge. Uh, he has worked on uh, very, very sensitive information for tanks, uh, computer chips, and things like that. Uh, he has also worked on the Mars rover. Uh, so, you know, so I knew if I was going to ask anybody that kind of knows more about technology and what can be done, uh, he actually believes that although the lithium battery, uh, if they're using lithium batteries within these pagers, could be used uh, to heat up that would make a little bit of a blast from what he has heard about this thus far, it's a possibility that Israel had prepared this long in advance, maybe even putting a little tiny blasting cap in there, putting a diode for a timer so it would have a delayed reaction, giving the uh, operatives enough time to take the pager after it went off, pick it up, and then look at it. That's some of the cases that we've heard about this thus far. And... Uh, uh, besides that, um, it's very, I want to remind you again, disturbing images here uh, that uh, they have. Some of these are covered up there. This, this uh, man here, his pager went off. Uh, there are people with their hands blown off as well uh, that, have, that, that has happened too. Uh, some people have di did die in, the, in these incidents here. Uh, there were over 2,000 people injured. Uh, eight so far fatalities confirmed. There were quite a few uh, people in Syria as well that this happened to. Israel has not accepted responsibility, nor have they denied anything regarding this here. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's a very, very tragic situation there. I'm not going to show you the next one because this one is a little bit more graphic. Uh, so by not showing that, I think we'll be okay with YouTube's guidelines on that there. But the man was sitting in his car and his fingers were all mangled and blown off. Uh, so 
as Ron, as I talked to Ron about it, Ron did believe, like I said, that there that some type of, he said even a blasting cap alone uh, could be fitted into a pager and it could be set to where they could have it go off simultaneously at a later date. Uh, some are suggesting that Israel's advanced technology of hacking has allowed these things to turn into detonating uh, pagers, but Ron didn't actually buy that. He believes that, you know, maybe a third party country somewhere, uh, Israel may have been involved making sure they got built a certain way. Maybe Israel owned a factory somewhere, perhaps China or Taiwan or something like that. And then those devices were sold. Like he said, it could have been several years ago. And then when the time was right, they could detonate them at their discretion. Uh, causing all this uh, mayhem. I've heard one of the little blasts goes off, sounds almost like an M80. Uh, if you know what those are there, that's like a supercharged firecracker, probably about the equivalency of maybe six firecrackers together at one time. And uh, so they, they definitely cause damage. And he said, of course, being compacted inside of that casing itself gives it more of a blast. He said, if you have it open, he said, like in the case of a firecracker, if it went off in your hand, it would burn your hand. He said, but if you closed your hand, you could literally lose a finger because now the blast uh, has to, you know, you know, I forget exactly how I put it, but it would cause damage to the person. So uh, these are the things that are going on in the Middle East. Of course, many other things happening as well as, as always. But I want to also turn the attention to the uh, second attempted assassination was kind of interesting. There are some that are blaming Zelensky for this, uh, saying that he's that he may end up being the one behind the attack on Trump uh, because of his hatred towards him. Who knows? Nonetheless, I can tell you, though, it definitely will help in the polls. I hate to say it that way, but that's what drives it up. There are some that are even saying that the first attempt was a hoax, but this one was not, because this time the Secret Service really went into high gear and acted. Uh, the sheriff, though, down in Florida, though, had this to say uh, about the capture of the man that was involved. And by the way, this is the man that was taken into custody that was allegedly the one that uh, was firing shots at the president on the golf course there. Uh, and they talk about how that there was a witness, so that helped identify the vehicle uh, with a photograph and everything that made it much easier for the Sheriff's Department to capture this man here. Listen in to what uh, Sheriff Snyder had to say about that. Help from the witnesses that were on the scene down there at the golf course. I mean, they took a picture of the car, the license plate. They were able to identify this suspect. What more do you know about the efforts from these witnesses and really how much it helped aiding you guys and also Palm Beach County to kind of, you know, swiftly capture the suspect? Well, I can say this. If all they would have had was was the interchange between the Secret Service and the suspect and had he gotten out of there like he did, but there was no witness who took a picture, we may still be looking for that fellow. But we had that picture. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, a fabulous sheriff's office, gave us that picture right away. We knew the car we were looking for. So that witness really deserves the lion's share of the credit. Had that witness not done the right thing, used his head, snapped that picture, then came out to the interstate and identified the suspect, we, we would have a whole different scenario tonight. Here on the screen, some body cam footage of when that suspect was caught. Sheriff Snyder, let's talk about the investigation going forward. I know that that Anyway, this uh, the latest for us right now. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do this next video here. Uh, we'll probably not be doing it tonight. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's getting kind of late right now, though. But I do want to do that. And that video, though, by the way, is going to be dealing um, with um, generational curses. Uh, that will be over on Patreon.com. Uh, and... Uh, I think you'll find that very fascinating. Uh, I actually had to send a text back to Sister Anna and ask them about what I had said because it's one of those things when you fall under an anointing and you're speaking to someone, uh, you just forget. And her and Sister Becky, her sister-in-law, what a precious couple they were. Me and my wife met with them uh, today. And uh, 
So it was really uh, kind of a, a very enjoyable afternoon to get to talk to them. About, and, and we talked so much about the Lord. They were so well-versed themselves as well. And uh, so it was very, very insightful discussion. And uh, then we got into this thing about generational curses there. And uh, uh, they sent me those some things that I had said back. And so that uh, it so just to help me to remember that line of thought that I went into. So uh, I'll be very excited to share that with you guys as well. So again, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Go to the description below there. You'll see it. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, give the thumbs up if you appreciate the work we do here. And of course, Patreon is the best way to support our broadcast. So uh, we thank you. And of course, uh, you can always go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. We have a lot more information there now than what we've had before. My wife is going to be writing more articles still yet to come. Um, latest one is the open letter to the five docs there. Uh, we we were planning on doing the, uh, a follow-up video on that the other day. Uh, there's been a little bit of delay on that, uh, but it is coming. It is coming. More information uh, we want to share with you, and I hope that you've got to see the video that we just did too over on our YouTube channel there uh, where it was out of Zionism and into the true Christian faith. Uh, we talked about the journey. I, I thought we was really going to be going into more of the Noahide laws because my wife had quite a bit prepared on that and it just kind of took a natural turn. So we actually renamed the video. Let me take you to the channel here so you can see that there. Uh, but very interesting from Zionism to Christianity. Uh, only 5,000 views thus far, but believe me, it's well worth watching. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening, and we will talk soon.